Hi everyone and welcome to this month's Saturday Studio, the Norton's virtual art making session meant to expand your creativity through art making exercises inspired by the collection. My name is Kate Faulkner, Associate Curator of Education for Public Programs at the Norton. I am also an artist working with paint, drawing, and collage. Today we are going to focus on the idea of conveying and capturing movement through drawing. I have selected Paul Manship's nickel bronze sculpture, Acteon, cast in 1940, as my inspiration for the drawing. But you may work from any artwork, image, or object you have at home, which conveys a strong sense of movement or motion. This heroic sculpture depicting the figure of Acteon resides in the niches of the original Art Deco entrance to the museum and is one of a pair that Paul Manship created to illustrate the mythological story of Diana and Acteon. The hunter Acteon accidentally stumbled upon and surprised the ancient Roman goddess of the hunt and moon, Diana, while she was bathing. To prevent Acteon from telling anyone that he had seen her, the enraged goddess shot an arrow at Acteon, transforming him into a stag and leading his own dogs to devour him. Manship sculpture describes the high point of the story's drama when Diana is in the act of shooting and Acteon, fleeing and surrounded by his dogs, appears to have just been hit by the flight of the invisible arrow. This sculpture exemplifies Manship's mature style through the combination of abstraction and graceful motion. He gained immediate recognition for his cast bronzes, which often featured mythological subject matter represented with sleek, highly stylized forms. When I look at the sculpture of Acteon, I am immediately aware that this is the pinnacle moment of the story because of its dramatic tension. This can be attributed to Manship's skillful use of the artistic principle, visual movement. Visual movement is the path the viewer's eye takes through the work of art, often to focal points, and generates the feeling or impression of action found in a work of art. When I look at the sculpture of Acteon, I notice that we're observing a tragic moment of high action, which seems to be frozen in time. The figure of Acteon leans forward in a full range of motion, twisting his torso towards the viewer, suggesting he is exerting all of his energy to survive. Below Acteon's figure, we see his two dogs, mouths open and eyes alert, chasing and beginning to attack the figure further amplifying the drama of the moment. We can imagine the action that came before this moment and the continuation of what is to follow. The overall composition adds to the feeling of movement. Manship positions the figure as one long diagonal, which draws you into the action and moves the eye around to all the different, yet connected, components of the scene. Acteon's left leg extends behind him where a dog has leaped onto the figure, snarling. This interaction is a clear indication of how close the figures are to each other in space. Now let's begin our own drawing. You are welcome to draw from the bronze sculpture of Acteon or choose your own image that characterizes a moment of action or movement. Okay, everybody, I'm going to start my drawing and uh, just to talk through the materials that I'm using. For paper, I'm just gonna use my sketchbook and use paper in this. It's pretty thin. You can work on whatever paper you have um, at home, uh, whatever you have around the house um, or in your supply closet. I'm also going to use a graphite pencil, just a 2B lead, um, but I have varying um, softness uh, graphite pencils too. Um, if you want to go to a darker lead, you know, you can move up into like the 6B or the 8B. But I'm going to actually start with a harder graphite pencil. I think I'm going to start with 2H. But again, you can use whatever pencil you have. Um, you know, pencils like these mechanical pencils work just fine for something like this exercise. Um, and then I have just a reference image of Paul Manship's sculpture and a printout too. Um, so that's always handy just to have um, the actual object or an image of the object that you're going to be referring to. So since we are going to be focused on movement for this exercise and capturing movement and action and motion, I like to start with a really uh, light active line or a gesture line um, as my base for the drawing. So I'm just going to start um, really lightly kind of sketching in 
some of the um, contour lines of the object. So I'm gonna start with the shape of Acteon's figure. And so I'm kind of just really loosely going around the edges and capturing the general form of his arm, his outstretched arm here. And again, this does not have to be exact or very precise at this point. We're really just trying to uh, capture the essence of what is happening here. So I'm gonna move down to um, his leg. It's outstretched in front of him. Again, I'm really trying hard not to pick up my pencil that much and just being really light with the line. And it's completely okay if it's kind of a little sketchy and messy. That's, that's actually a good thing. And it will help later on in the process when um, you know the final drawing is complete, the sketchiness of the underdrawing will actually help um, with that sense of, of motion and movement that we're trying to achieve here. So again, I'm just really slowly working my way around the figure. And I'm actually gonna move down a little bit below um, Actan's foot and start to loosely outline um, the upper part of one of his hounds. Maybe getting even a little bit um, more loose with the drawing, just so I can kind of get a sense of where this object is in space. Getting his outstretched foot. I'm really just concentrating on the general layout and form of the main action here. Part of that action is the two hounds chasing Acteon after he has been, um, after he's begun turning into a deer or a stag. Okay, so very loosely captured the hound uh, right below Acteon's figure, and now I'm gonna kind of continue um, describing his back left leg, which is reaching uh, down as he is trying to race away. And again, at this point, we're not trying to be exact or capture a lot of uh, detail. We don't, we're not looking for exact detail at this point. This is uh, just to help with composition, make sure we've got all of the forms in the right, in the general right place. Okay, and so now I've got his leg kind of outlined. I'm going to begin um, drawing in the second hound that's right behind him, actually climbing up his leg. I think that might be, you know, the main uh, point of action and movement um, in this scene is that is that hound there kind of actually, you know, making contact with the figure. So I'm just going to add his front arm paw here on his leg, slowly start to describe what's happening. And I've also got erasers here if that you know makes you feel um, a little bit more confident in your drawings to you know erase some lines that you feel aren't working. I'm going to challenge you not to use them and kind of just use your underlying sketch here as uh, kind of a grid or a guide to the next uh, step of the of the exercise. Okay, so now I've got kind of a very generalized idea of where the hound's head is um, positioned. And I'm going to start working my way up 
uh, Act Anne's torso. And a good um, way to measure too, if you're getting the shapes and the forms in the you know, general right area is to look at negative space. So you can see there's a really interesting um, space in, inside Actan's uh, folded arm. It's almost like a little triangle. So you can use that too as a guide for um, whatever you're drawing, whatever negative spaces you can see in your drawing is also a really nice way to understand the correct angles and direction of the form. Okay, so now I've got starting to draw his arm. And now I'm gonna work my way up to uh, the figure's face and head. Try to really uh, concentrate on the way that his neck is stretched and turned so it's kind of angled towards the left. I'm still trying to stay very fluid here, I'm getting the general positioning down, really concentrating on the, the key moments of action in the piece, but also trying to really understand and accentuate the way that his body is positioned. And again, this is not an exercise in perfection or trying to get things exactly correct. We're just really trying to um, get the composition right and get all of the key players here on the paper. So just continue uh, gliding your pencil around the paper, kind of getting those details down. I'm looking at um, Acteon's kind of muscle structure. There's a lot of um, details of that in his arm that are happening, and that's a really uh, Good thing to concentrate on um, when you're trying to capture motion, movement, action. That kind of strain that's happening um, as he's racing away. Okay, so as you can see here in my example, you know, I've made the figures a little bit large, so um, they're starting to run off the page, which is fine. Um, you know, artists often make decisions to accentuate or amplify or abstract uh, what they're using as their source image. So that's a, com that's a decision that uh, you can make as the person who's making the drawing. Okay, so I like to think of, you know, this underdrawing, this really sketchy, loose underdrawing that uh, you start with as sort of a maquette. And if, uh, a maquette is basically an underlying structure uh, for a sculpture that you would then add um, material on top of, like clay or uh, plaster or whatever um, you're using. So I like to think of this as kind of the, the bones of the, the final draw, drawing that you're going to create. So just be free with it and allow mistakes to happen. You have plenty of time um, to refine and correct um, areas that you feel like are not um, what you want them to be. So now that I've kind of captured the overall sense of the forms and shapes in this uh, scene, acting on his two hounds, I'm gonna start very slowly, just begin to add a little bit more detail on top of that beginning drawing. So I'm just gonna really slowly start to pay attention to uh, areas that I want to accentuate. 
and that I feel like are important in capturing motion and movement. Um, so I'm just gonna maybe begin to be, have a little bit more commitment with my drawing. Um, and with that, I'm gonna start using a little bit of a darker um, graphite. So this was a 2B pencil, and that'll just give me a little bit of a darker shade. Um, and it will also help with the sense of three-dimensionality and depth. So I'm just gonna begin by like, kind of focusing on areas that I wanna clarify. Um, I think a big center of motion here, a big focus of motion in this scene is the way that Acteon is twisting his torso as he's stretching away and trying to escape from his hounds. So that's what I'm gonna start paying attention to first, is really trying to draw out that sense of, of motion in his, the center of his figure. So um, his hand is, you know, kind of laying flat up against his, the side of his figure. So I'm gonna to try to start to lay that in just a little. And again, you know, this is still very much um, changing and we're still being loose. We're just trying to add a tiny bit more uh, clarity to the drawing. So just take your time, be patient with yourself and try to enjoy the process. I am trying to articulate um, some more of his muscle tone through his leg. Uh, you can really see here that he's um, exerting himself probably to the most possible uh, degree. And I think that's something that is challenging to capture in a drawing. Um, but this is a really good method to do it without under, under sketch because it's, it really uh, kind of draws your attention to the fact that this is someone who is in motion. I'm just describing his foot a little bit more in detail around his ankle a little bit more heavily with the line around his leg. So we're really trying to kind of uh, capture that impression of motion that's happening here in the sculpture. And it's still a good idea to focus on those negative shapes. Um, I, I'm finding that helpful around the top of his figure, uh, how his arm is kind of arced up. Um, so looking at those negative shapes that happen instead of really concentrating on the form of the arm, negative shape can help you to understand and, and clarify what's actually happening with those, those shapes. So I'm just going around his right on the and I'm going to move down and try to um, accentuate the hounds head because that's also a really important part of the action of this piece, um, how he's really grasping on to Acteon's legs and snarling his teeth. Uh, I think that's, for me, a really uh, important part that I want to um, try to draw more attention to. Kind of moving around, still gliding your pencil like you were before, getting too caught up in one particular place. You can even start to add a little bit more detail. Like I'm gonna try to go ahead and map out where the ear is there on the hound's head and uh, his eye. We can always go back and add a little bit more exact. And then I don't want to forget about this guy down below, so I'm going to bring out a little bit more detail in his head and his face. And remember, you know, as the artist, it's up to you what you want to choose to accentuate, amplify, uh, maybe even ab abstract, but since this is an exercise that's focused on movement mainly. Um, I'm gonna try to 
really focus on the parts of this piece that are have the most action. And I think that this hound below, he's kind of in mid leap. His arms are outstretched, his hind legs are too. So I'm gonna try to make that an important part of the action and motion here. It's also interesting to kind of understand how all the objects or um, figures um, are interacting with each other. That can help too with portraying motion. So, you know, how close is Actaeon's foot to the top of the hound's figure body and how this hound is kind of interacting with the figure here. So that can also really draw your attention to the fact that this is just a moment in time, but it's uh, at the highest point of action. So I'm just kind of laying this front paw in, trying to make this a little bit clearer. Go back up to the head, maybe. So continue just drawing and adjusting um, to create more definition and more detail, more interest. And it's a you know a, a process of refinement. So you know we're just still quickly laying in um, and sketching very loosely here. Um, approximate placements, approximate directions, um, trying to get the angles generally in the right places while I'm starting to slowly make decisions about where um, certain forms and objects are existing. So I'm just gonna continue with this process of continuing to refine and focus on these areas of high uh, intensity and dynamism. And like I said, I really find that happening in uh, the way that Acteon stretching his, uh, his body and the gesture of the position and space that he is in. So just continue with that. Okay, so I'm continuing to accentuate the areas of emphasis here, slowly beginning to define, further define is figure in space and his expression in his, his face with his eyebrows and his uh, kind of almost seeming like his eyes are closed. So I'm gonna just loosely add that detail, maybe his mouth, which looks also partially closed. <laughs> so just continue focusing on laying in the action. I think the um, muscular tone in the hound, the way that Manship described the hound's bodies is also important too. Um, so if you are using an image like mine that has a lot of uh, the figures are motion and you can kind of see the underlying muscular tone. I think that's a really important um, feature to highlight and bring out in your drawing.
All right, so um, once you've gotten to a point in your drawing where you feel like a lot of the details that you uh, find important have been accentuated, um, you can start to move on to the next part, which is laying in the shadows uh, to accentuate, to further accentuate the action in the drawing and to get kind of a sense of the impact that is happening here. So um, you can use a 2B. I might, think I might go a little bit darker to a 3B um, just to further push the sense of um, the forms and space and th the three-dimensionality of the, the sculpture. Um, and begin to slowly just start pulling out with shadow um, the places in the figure or the image that you've chosen to um, recreate, just pull out the areas in your image that you feel like have the most sense of movement and motion. And you can just start to slowly accentuate that with your shadow. So I'm kind of just going around the figure really slowly and just beginning to add a little bit of depth with by shading with my with my pencil. And this starts to mask a little bit of the sketchiness from the underdrawing. Um, and if you know if you like that look of the sketchiness, you're welcome, you know, leave it in. It's completely up to you. I I, since I'm using this uh, reference piece by Manship that's very stylized and very simple, I'm, I'm trying to also start to capture that sense too of the very smooth forms um, that he's created in this sculpture. So I see a lot of dark shadows in my image that I'm working from right around his uh, underneath his neck or at, at his neck underneath his chin and kind of underneath his uh, both his both of his arms as he has them outstretched running away and I also see some uh, right on the underside of his torso where that I feel like the main action and movement is taking place. So I'm really going to try to make that a little bit um, darker. And then uh, also his right leg. I know that that area is exerting a lot of energy, so I want to uh, accentuate that too. And with these drawings, you know, they can be quick sketches that take, you know, 10, 20 minutes, or you can spend, you know, a, a much longer time getting this to where you want it to be. Um, this is obviously a really short example uh, today. So, you know, the detail isn't quite where I would want it to be. I'd, I'd probably want to spend, you know, another hour or two on this, trying to get it um, to achieve that sense of motion and movement that I'm, I'm wanting to. But you kind of get a sense for the the way that you can go about trying to achieve that. So I'm just continuing to move my pencil around, adding more depth through shadow um, in the areas that I see in my image that I want to uh, bring out. So for this exercise, I want you to use the image that you're working with and really bring out the areas of motion and movement that you find most important. And that means that like, not every detail needs to be um, focused on. If you just want to 
focus on those key areas of motion, movement, and action, and start to hone in on the details of those, I think that is the key to what we're working on today. So here I'm really trying to accentuate the center of Actian's figure and also where the hounds uh, come into the scene and interact with his, uh, with his body. But I am really trying, my goal with this is trying to portray the sense that this figure is in motion. I'm just, just gonna continue adding the shadow and continue working on your drawing. Okay, so I wanted to share with you um, a drawing that I worked on a little earlier um, that I spent a little bit longer on. The goal of this exercise is to portray motion and action. Um, so this is a more finalized drawing based on Paul Manship's Acteon. Um, and I have really started to pull out the details in the drawing. The hound's figures are a little bit more realized. Um, there are still some sketchy areas around the figures that I wanted to include because I feel like it really um, amplifies that sense of motion and movement. Um, but there's also areas like part of the hound here that I, I didn't choose to um, really bring more detail into. So it's, it's completely up to you um, and it's exciting to kind of make those decisions about what you want to include and what you want to um, leave up to, to the viewer to interpret. Um, so I am excited to see what you all choose for your source images uh, for this exercise and um, I hope that you enjoy creating these drawings and please share um, please share your final drawing on social media. You can use the hashtag Saturday Studio and we will see you again next month. Thank you.